Hey there, I'm Cyberchroma, and today I will be showing you how to spawn objects in your Unity games. We will create this setup with random objects falling from above. This tutorial is for beginners, but hopefully you have used Unity before. Ready? Let's get started! Opening up a new project, to start with spawning objects, we first need to create the object that we will be spawning. We will use a ball that will fall under gravity, so let's right click and select 3D Object, Sphere. We will rename it to Ball. Let's now move this to position 0, 10, 0. To allow our ball to drop, we will add a rigid body component so physics, and more specifically gravity, will act on it. Select Add Component, then type in Rigid Body. With Use Gravity checked, the rigid body will work as we want it to with the default settings. Hitting play, we can see our ball plunges downwards. Great! Let's give it some color to make it more interesting. Let's create a new folder called Material for our colors. Making a new material, we will call it Blue. Going over to the color box and bringing up the color wheel, we will make our material a blue color. I will then set metallic to 0.5. As well, I will create materials for some of the other basic colors that we will use later. Now, let's get our camera into position. Selecting the main camera, let's move it to 0, 0, and negative 10, and rotate it to 10, 0, 0. Right now, the camera shows this ground, horizon, and sky in the background, but let's change it to a solid color. Selecting the camera, we can go to Clear Flags and change Skybox to Solid Color. Then, we can change the background color to whatever we want. I will go for an orangey color with the hex value 804600. The last thing we need to do to our ball so that we can spawn it in is to turn it into something called a prefab. A prefab is like a template of an object saved with the rest of our game files. This can be used to make copies of the same object that all have the same properties. We will create a new folder called prefabs to store it. We can turn our ball into a prefab by simply dragging it into the project window. Then we can select the ball in the inspector and delete it as we do not need it anymore. Now we are ready to start spawning. Let's create the object that will spawn our ball. We can go to Create, Create Empty. Let's call this Spawner and move it to position 0, 10, 0 where the ball was. We will now program a way to spawn our objects when the game is running. Let's create a new folder, Scripts, then create our c -sharp script that we'll call Object Spawner. Opening it up, we will start by removing the update function as we will not be using it. First, we want to create a variable for the object that we will be spawning. This will be a public game object that we will call object to spawn. As well, we will make a public float called delay for the time between spawning a ball. Now, we want a way of having a delay in our code, so we will make what is called a coroutine. Making a new function, we will type ieNumerator, and we will call this wait to spawn, then two round brackets, and then two squiggly brackets. In this function, we can create a delay by typing yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, the number of seconds for our delay. We will use our delay variable so we can modify it in the inspector. Then we will call a function we are about to write that will create our object. So let's go below this function and create a new one with void spawn. Here we can create our object with Unity's built-in function called instantiate. In the brackets, we will type the object we want to spawn, in this case our object to spawn variable, then where we want to spawn it, which will be at the transform.position of the spawner, and finally the rotation of the object when we spawn it, which will be the rotation of the spawner with transform.rotation. Back in the wait to spawn function, we can call our spawn function by typing spawn bracket bracket semicolon. So now this will wait for our delay, then spawn the object. 
We want this to loop, so then in the spawn function, we can call the wait function. For a coroutine, this is slightly different, as we will type start coroutine, bracket, wait to spawn, then the rest of the brackets, and then a semicolon. Lastly, this won't do anything unless we start this looping code by going into start and calling the wait to spawn function. Let's save and go back to Unity. First, let's add the script to our spawner game object. We can see the public variables that we have created. For our delay, let's try 0.5. To assign our object to spawn, we will go into our prefabs folder and find our ball and drag it into the box field. Hitting play, we now see copies of our ball spawn over and over. This works as we want it to, but there are a few things that we can do to make our game more optimized. First, over in the inspector, you can see that our spawned objects are filling it up pretty quickly, and that they continue to exist well after they have left the bottom of the screen. Going out of play mode, we can tidy things up a bit by creating another empty game object that we will file our objects under. Let's name this spawned objects. Back in our code, we first want to get a reference to the transform of this game object. We could create it as a public variable and drag the reference over, similar to what we did with the ball, but let's do it in another way. We will create a private transform and call it spawn parent. Then in start, we can get a reference with spawn parent equals game object dot find. Then in brackets and quotation marks, we can type the name we gave it in the inspector. Make sure to spell it exactly the same, with a space and capitals where they should be. Now, where we instantiate our ball, we can add comma spawn parent, so the ball will spawn as a child game object of the spawn parent. Back in Unity, we will now make the balls get destroyed after they are done being used, so we don't have the unnecessary clutter. We will go to the scripts folder and create a new script called destroy by time. Opening this up, we don't need the update function in this script either, so we will delete that. Then, we will create a float for the time until the object is destroyed. We will type public float, and we will call it lifetime. In our start function, all we need to type is destroy bracket game object, then our lifetime variable bracket semicolon. Back to Unity. Now, we will add the destroy code to the ball prefab. We can do this by selecting the ball and selecting Open Prefab. This will open the prefab temporarily in a new scene. We can then add the Destroy by Time script to the player. We will set the lifetime to 5 seconds. In the hierarchy, selecting this back arrow will bring us back to the scene we were just working in. Now we can hit play, and we can see the balls spawning the same as before, but now they are all child objects of our spawned object's parent. As well, they are getting destroyed after 5 seconds of them being spawned, so there is not as many in the scene at once. Now, let's make this a bit more interesting, so that multiple objects are being spawned at random. Let's create a cube that we will call box, and in the same way as the ball, we will add a rigid body with the default settings. Let's also give it a red material. We can make this a prefab as well by dragging it into our prefabs folder like we did with the ball. Let's make a few more with different colors by selecting our ball and box and hitting Ctrl D a few times, so now we have five of each. If we select one of the balls, we can change the color by opening the prefab, going into our materials, and dragging a new color onto it. I will do the same with the rest of our balls and boxes. Now, let's change our code to spawn objects randomly. First, we can get references to all of the potential objects to spawn by adding square brackets after the type of variable, turning this into an array of game objects, which is essentially a list storing multiple game objects. Then we will add an S to the variable name. Over in instantiate, we will change this to objects to spawn, then, to pick one of the objects from the list, we will use square brackets with the number in the list of the object that we want to use. However, the first object of the list does not start with a 1, but instead with a 0. So, if we wanted to access the first object in the list, we would put a 0. To access the second, we would put a 1, and so on. To access the last object in the list, we can type objects to spawn dot length, which gives us the number of objects in the list, 
minus 1. We want to randomly pick an object from this list, so we want to pick a random number between 0 and the length minus 1. We can use the function random.range to do this. This generates a random number between the first number up to right before the second number. So, random.range 1, 4 would generate a random number between 1 and 3. So, we will use a 0 at one end and objects to spawn.length without the minus 1 on the other end. Lastly, let's make our objects spawn with a random rotation. We can do this simply by replacing transform.rotation with random.rotation. Let's now go back to Unity. If we take a look at our spawner, we can see a drop down button next to our objects to spawn variable. Then we can set the number of objects in the list. We have 10 objects to choose between, so we will go with that. Now we have 10 fields for objects similar to what we had before. We can now drag all of our objects into the fields. Let's also lower the delay to 0.01. Hitting play, we can now see all of our objects spawning at random, and since they are spawning so close together, they are hitting off of each other, causing them to move and spin around as they fall. One last thing I would like to do is increase the area in which the objects spawn, so instead of a cone, it's more of a square. We can do this by adding some randomness to the position where the objects spawn. Back to our code, we will first add a new variable for the range of the square. Then, we will be replacing transform.position with code similar to it. We will type new vector3 bracket transform.position.x, transform.position.y, transform.position.z. This is essentially the same, and now we can add numbers to a specific axis to offset where the object is being spawned. On the x-axis, we will add a random number from the range going to the left to the range going to the right. So we will add the x position by random.range, negative range to positive range. Since we are working with decimals, the random number can include the positive range, and we don't need a plus 1. Setting the range to say 10, let's run the game. The scene is much more exciting now, our objects are falling with a lot of randomness and going all over the place. Now we have created a way to spawn random objects. Using what you've learned in this video, as well as the Unity Basics tutorial, I challenge you to bring in the ball character and make a simple game where you have to dodge hazards that fall from above. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have ideas for tutorials you want to see, please suggest them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you around.